Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of The Office. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. I am calling to see if you would come down and interview for a job. You are here in the parking lot of Dunder Mifflin. Michael Scott Sebring is in its spot and the parking lot is full, so you know everyone is in there. Open the door and head into the building for your first day as the newest Dunder Mifflin temp. Ryan called out sick for a while and they need someone pronto. They knew you'd fit in perfectly. Quickly, adjust your business clothes to make sure you look sharp. Confidence is key. Hold your head high as far away from your ears as possible and take a slow, deep breath in through your nose to ready yourself. Hold your breath as you open the doors into the Dunder Mifflin Suite. Then, slowly, breathe out through your mouth as Pam looks up from reception and greets you with a smile. <laughs> hey, have I told you you look really nice today? She gets up to shake your hand and turns around to show you where you will sit in the back by Meredith, where Ryan sits. I really need this new chair. I mean, seriously. David Wallace walks out of a meeting with Michael in his office, and Michael darts over to you and Pam before you can get past Jim and Dwight's desk. Hello, I thought that was you, hi. Michael proudly introduces you to David Wallace as the brand new temp who came with a glowing review. Oh, thank you. He laughs and nudges you that you might be the temp to put Ryan the temp out of work. David shakes your hand before he leaves. All right, well, I should go. Thanks for this. And Michael takes over walking you to your desk. That's why I wanted a signal between us. Jim smirks and waves hello. But I told you that you'd be on camera. But Dwight does not because he cannot see you. Jim has hidden Dwight's glasses, so Dwight temporarily cannot see anything. Stanley and Phyllis wave politely, as does accounting. Meredith is already asleep at her desk, and Creed has gone missing. Michael pulls out your chair for the royal treatment on your first day. Just like Ryan the temp, he expects you to will become fast friends. Our total BFF, best friends forever. He leaves you to your desk and to settle in. It's going to be a good first day at Dunder Mifflin. Take another slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel your chest rise against the buttons on your business casual clothes. Then slowly, Breathe out through your mouth. You're sitting in a chair that swivels and it squeaks a little when you twist from side to side. It gets Andy's attention and from across the room, he shouts for a spin-off. The camera pans to Jim, making his gym face. Then he says you definitely do not need to challenge him to a chair spin-off and that Andy is being a distraction. Andy spins anyways, proudly spinning round and round until he stops suddenly, very dizzy and nauseous. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left. That was enough to annoy Angela, who has left to file a complaint. Okay, question. Does that also apply to the permanent misbehavior file in New York? You listen to Jim and decide to get to work instead of spinning. Jim and Pam make their way to your desk on their way to the kitchen 
just as you're opening your drawer for your supplies. It opens to reveal that your stapler, your pens, and even a ream of paper have been put into jello. <laughs> Dwight laughs loudly as he passes. Jim quickly comes to your defense to say that Dwight is recycling pranks. That's against the unspoken code of pranks. Dwight continues on into the annex and Jim and Pam sit on your desk. They have a plan to get Dwight but they need everyone, especially you, to be in on it. They have an idea to make Dwight think that he's invisible. Dwight will assume you don't want to rock that boat since it's your first day and will try to sway you, but you'll have to stick to the story. Everyone else is in too. Since Dwight already pranked you, he definitely deserves a good prank. So, you're in. Jim leaves the office for a few hours to get something for the prank. When he gets back, he walks straight back to your desk and laughs as he drops a folded newspaper onto your desk. You open it up and read a fake story about how a recently discovered secret ingredient in beets can make people invisible if treated in a very specific recipe. The recipe was supposedly leaked and is now available to the public only for the brave of heart. You and Jim snicker to yourself, <laughs> which gets Pam's attention. She walks over to your desk sees the newspaper and laughs. The plan is ready to be set in motion. Everyone in the office is on board. Absolutely, yeah, that would be amazing. And waiting for the cue. Woo! Let's do it. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Focus on not laughing at Dwight when he thinks he's invisible, even if you want to. Then, slowly, Breathe out through your mouth and strike up a pretend conversation about beats with Jim and Pam. You say beats loud enough to get Dwight's attention. He immediately stops working and demands to know what you, Jim and Pam, are talking about. Really, Jim? Because you never, ever talk about it. He's an authority on beats and will likely show you how wrong you are about beets. Jim explains that scientists recently discovered a previously secret ingredient present in beets that makes people invisible if treated with a specific recipe. It was something used in the military, but now the recipe has been leaked and only the bravest are trying it for themselves. <laughs> Dwight laughs and says that's not true at all. He would have known that by now if it were true. That's when Jim walks over and drops the folded newspaper on Dwight's desk. Dwight's smirk turns to shock and then to horror. He did not know this. Before anyone else can say anything, he rushes to his car to grab some spare beets he keeps in the trunk for emergencies and sprints back to the kitchen with bushels of beets in his hands. Everyone giggles and watches as much as they can through the kitchen window as Dwight follows the beet invisibility recipe carefully, step by step. After a short while, Dwight emerges from the kitchen, sweaty, covered in beet juice, and wearing a big smile. The whole office does a spectacular job of not reacting to when Dwight came through the door, except for when it closed behind him. Then you look up and ask out loud if someone just opened and closed the kitchen door. Oh my God! Jim looks over and says he saw it open, 
and heard it close too. Stanley chuckles to himself under his breath as Dwight is in shock that it worked, that he's invisible. Pam looks right through Dwight to the kitchen and gets up to ask if anyone's seen Dwight. She yells to Michael who comes out and asks where Dwight is too. He walks right past Dwight into the kitchen. The rest of you follow him. Michael exclaims when he sees that the kitchen is completely covered in beet juice. This is, this is my place. Jim and Pam are doing their best to hide their laughter, but everyone is about to burst out laughing. You hold it together as best as you can. Pam plays it up, saying that the last anyone saw Dwight was when he was making the beet invisibility recipe. Oscar chimes in to say that it's impossible. Beats do not make you invisible. Then he giggles with his eyes so as not to giggle out loud. Even Kevin doesn't spoil it and unfortunately thinks it's actually real. He begins gulping down the beat concoction that Dwight made and looking down in his arm, waiting to be invisible too. Dwight walks back in, his eyes bright and he's smiling with his arms up as if he's one. Phyllis chimes in with a really worried voice and says she hopes Dwight is okay now that he's invisible. Dwight looks right at you as if he's testing you as the newest temp. Take another slow, deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath and your laughter in for a moment. Then, slowly, breathe out through your mouth and ask out loud where everyone thinks Dwight went now that he's invisible. Jim thinks for a moment, then says that if he knows Dwight at all, Dwight will definitely set out to avenge each and every one of his many enemies now that he's cloaked in invisibility. Dwight flinches and freezes as if he's realized something. Then he darts out of the office covered in beet juice, ready to avenge his enemies and thinking he's perfectly invisible. The entire office bursts into laughter as soon as the door closes. You did it. You helped with one of the most epic pranks in history. Everyone high fives you as you all make your way to the window that overlooks the parking lot. Out the window you can see Dwight making a complete fool of himself. He hasn't even gotten out of the parking lot. Ryan the temp should be worried about keeping his job because you are now officially the office's favorite temp. Always remember that Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.